Welcome to the fourth tutorial in our series about getting started with Excel Deploy. During the first tutorial in the series, we quickly walked through the process of deploying an application to an environment. In this tutorial, we'll take a closer look at that process. First, let's review our setup. I've defined the environments that my application will pass through as it goes from development to testing to production. During this tutorial, I'm going to deploy to the development environment. There's one infrastructure container in the environment, an application server. I've assigned two dictionaries to the environment. One is a standard dictionary, and the other is encrypted. They contain placeholder values that are specific to this environment. Now I'm ready to deploy version 1.0 of my application to the development environment. First, I drag the application package to the deployment workspace. Then I drag in the environment. I'll bring up the plan analyzer so we can see the deployment plan being generated as I map deployables in the application to the container in the environment. I'll do that now by dragging each deployable to the container. Another way to do this is to click the Auto Map button. Excel Deploy will automatically map the deployables for me, based on their types. If you need fine-grained control, you can assign tags to deployables and containers in the repository. Excel Deploy matches up the tagged items during the auto-mapping process. By the way, these arrows show the mapping from deployable to container. This makes it easy for you to see where each item will be deployed, especially when you have a large, complex deployment. Now that the mapping is complete, let's take a look at the properties of the deploys. The properties that are available depend on the configuration item that you're deploying. They're defined by the Excel Deploy plugins that you have installed. For example, if you inspect the data source configuration item, you'll see the values of all properties of the data source that can be created. In a later tutorial, we'll see how you can extend the built-in configuration items and even define your own. The values for these properties can be specified in different ways. They can be literal values that the developer or application packager sets in the deployment package, or you can enter them here while setting up a deployment, or they can be environment-specific values that are automatically provided by Excel Deploy. Excel Deploy replaces placeholders in the deployment package with the appropriate values from the dictionaries that are associated with the target environment. That's the case for the credentials in my database connection item and for the repository location in my application binary. The plan analyzer shows the deployment steps that Excel Deploy has generated. I didn't have to write any scripts or configure any workflows myself. Excel Deploy takes care of that automatically. If you want to take a closer look at the commands that Excel Deploy will use to execute a step in the plan, just double-click the eye icon. Now I'll go to the plan and execute it. Because Excel Deploy is an agentless solution, I don't need to install components on the target server before running the plan. Excel Deploy connects to the target servers, copies the files that are needed if they're not already staged, and executes any required commands. It does all of this serially or in parallel with automatic options, so you don't have to script any of it yourself. The release dashboard gives me an overview of which application version is running in each of my environments. I can see that version 1.0 is now running in the development environment. Now you should have a better idea of the basics of deploying an application with Excel Deploy. Just choose your package, select the target environment, Map the deployables from the package to the containers in the environment, and execute the deployment plan. In later tutorials, I'll show you how you can easily up or downgrade a deployed application, or roll back a full or partial deployment. But first, in the next tutorial, we'll look at how to create deployment packages for your applications.